uh, if you factor in, right, then we can uh, get the appropriate fuel consumption in kg per hour. You know, it's a diesel, so diesel has a tariff value of around 42 uh, megajoules per kg or 42 into 1000 kilojoules per kg, right. Uh, the value actually will depend upon the quality of the diesel, but we generally assume the uh, tariff value of the diesel as 42,000. One can also uh, take a suitable CV by actually measuring the CV using a warm water. So, if you get to know the brake power and if you get to know the fuel consumption, you can calculate the brake thermal efficiency. So, suppose you are asked to calculate the brake thermal efficiency, what observations do you do? You will take the fuel consumption observation and you will take the brake power observation. It means that you would record the time for 10 ml of fuel consumption and you would record the load of the engine and you record the speed of the engine. That's it. You won't require any other thing. Is this clear? So for calculating the brake thermal efficiency, you would require only the fuel consumption rating and you would require the corresponding ratings of the brake, the, the eddy current dynamic. Correct? Other parameters, if you want to know the other parameters, especially if you are interested in knowing how the engine, how is the energy supply to the engine and how is the energy being utilized by the engine. Uh, we know that we calculate what is known as heat balance shift. Okay. So let me explain brief how we arrive at the heat balance shift. A uh, heat balance shift is just like a bank balance shift where you have a credit side and here you can have a debit side also. Okay. So credit side and debit side, what goes in, what comes out. Right? What goes in in the form of energy that is the input side and what goes out in the form of energy that is the output side. So let us say this is your output side and this is your credit side, input side, credit and debit side. Right? Now what goes in this engine? Uh, we have seen that it is a heat engine, it is a diesel engine. So what goes in is the energy along with the fuel. Now how is the energy going into the fuel? So energy is going into the fuel because you are burning the fuel, there is a combustion of the fuel and the diesel is going to burn and its calorific value is known. So that will give you the energy which goes into the engine. So whatever is the value which you get from calculations, multiplied by 42,000 kilojoules per kg would give you the answer in kilojoules, right? This could be the answer. If you are, if you know the mass of it, then this would be kilojoules per second or kilowatts. So this is the input to the engine. Now what happens to this input? What the diesel engine does? So the diesel engine, as we have seen in the setup, it utilizes that energy in the form of brake power. So whatever is the brake power which we have calculated earlier, which is the dynamometer, that comes here. That value can directly write in kilowatts. Okay, so this is the useful output. Brake power is the useful output of this engine. But other than that, there are all losses. Other than that, there are all losses. So, which are the major losses from the diesel engine? One is through the cylinder of the engine. You know that we had seen the setup, and you, uh, we had also seen that uh, there is a jacket water being circulated around the engine, and this jacket water is going to absorb that energy which is rejected by the engine body. Okay. To the engine body, whatever the energy is born, that goes to the jacket water, and hence the heat is lost to the jacket water, engine jacket water. So, engine jacket water heat loss can be calculated as mass of the water, Cp of the water into, into what now? Into the temperature difference. Which temperature difference? As we have seen that, it is basically the water which is entering the jacket and water which is leaving the jacket. So, delta T, temperature difference across the engine jacket. Uh, which would be more? The water leaving the jacket would be more, uh, the temperature of the water leaving the jacket would be more and the uh, temperature of the water entering the jacket would be closer to the atmospheric temperature. Okay. So this is how we calculate it. So if you take this mass of the water using the LPHD, LPHD is not the number of the ratio, okay, and convert this into the corresponding kgs per second, right? CP of the water you know is 4.187 kilojoules per kg and delta T you get in degree centigrade or Kelvin, whatever, you will get the answer in kilowatts. 
you get density kilograms. Right? So this is the energy which is lost from the jacket motor. And then there is a heat loss, heat loss from the exhaust gases. From exhaust gases. Now heat loss from the exhaust gases, how do you calculate? For that I need to uh, explain you in detail a bit. Uh, before that I will just write an expression over here. It is basically the mass of exhaust gas into the specific heat of exhaust gas into the temperature of the gas leaving the engine. Temperature of the gas leaving the engine minus the atmospheric temperature. The ambient temperature. Okay. This will give you the heat loss from the exhaust gases and this has to be again in kilowatts. Okay. So suppose this is your something let us say 30 kilowatts, whatever. Uh, or let us say this is uh, this is some x, this is some y, this is some z, then x plus y plus z will not be equal to, let us say this is capital X. So if you want to figure out this actually, ideally it should be capital X is equal to x plus y plus z, but some of the energy we are not able to measure, right? So that we call it as unaccounted for process. So what we do is that we calculate x, we calculate the small x, we calculate small y, calculate small z, subtract this x plus y plus z, we just add this 3 and subtract it from x and that we call it as finally unaccounted for losses. Unaccounted for losses. Okay. That will be your final term. That will be your final term. Unaccounted for losses. Now, how do you calculate this z? That I am going to explain you in a big detail. Right? Uh, this, uh, I hope it's clear what is heat balance sheet. Heat balance sheet is basically an energy balance which shows how much is the energy going into this engine and how much is the energy being utilized as well as how much is the energy being lost. So let us look at how the energy loss from the exhaust gases is calculated. For this, let us again remember the setup. Uh, if you remember the setup, I have shown you the exhaust gas calorimeter over there. So in that exhaust gas calorimeter, uh, we can see what happened is, suppose this is your exhaust gas calorimeter. So where is it connected? This calorimeter is connected to the exhaust manifold, right? Exhaust pipe, suppose this is your engine. This is your engine. And this is the gas which is really, this is the exhaust gas from the engine. So this gas goes into the exhaust gas calorimeter and then it is let out to the surrounding. It is the let out to the surrounding. So this is the surrounding. What we do is that we record the temperature here. This temperature is recorded temperature in of the gas and we record the temperature here, this temperature out of the gas. This will be more and this will be less. Right? Energy will be lost by the exhaust gases in this calorimeter. Where will this energy go? So you need to supply coolant. This coolant is flowing through this calorimeter. So water is entering here. It will be uh, let in at ambient temperature and water will go out. It will be at a higher temperature. Why it will be at a higher temperature? Because the water will absorb the energy which is lost by the exhaust gas. So what will be the energy balance for this? Heat lost by the gases. Heat lost by gases is equal to heat gained by water. Heat gained by water. So what is the heat caused by gases? Mass of exhaust, CP of exhaust and the temperature difference. So this is let us say whatever, let us say this is Pg1 and this is Pg2. Which will be more? Pg1 will be more. So Pg1 minus Pg2 and let me call this as some Pw1 and Pw2 which will be more Pw2 will be more so this will be mass of water Cp of water Pw2 minus Pw1 right now we are measuring this using the flow meter which, I, which we had seen in the setup uh, we know the Cp of the water which is 4.187 and we have measured these temperatures using the thermocouples, right? And using the indicator, which was shown to you in the setup. 
we had measured this temperatures of the gases again by using the setup that this will be unknown, this will be unknown. So by solving this equation, what we will get is M of exhaust into Cp of exhaust. Now what to do with this? This M of exhaust into Cp of exhaust, once you get, you use this for calculating the energy balance of this engine. That is, you use it for calculating the heat loss by exhaust gases. Now heat loss by the exhaust gases of the engine, how do you calculate now? Now this, you have to take this value, mind you, you have to take this value. So this value which you have calculated and into what? Now what is the common mistake is, students generally take this Pg2 minus Pg1 in this formula. However, it is wrong. We are not calculating how much is the heat loss by this into this calorimeter. We are calculating now what is the heat loss by this engine. So the reference is this temperature minus the surrounding temperature, surrounding temperature. So this temperature, right, so assuming that this is, this is same. So let us say Pg1 minus P8. So this will give you the heat loss by the exhaust gases, which I have called Z in my table. Okay. So this is how we arrive at the heat balance sheet of this, uh, uh, of this engine. So two important calculations I had explained you. One is I had explained you how to calculate the brake thermal efficiency and I had explained you how to calculate the, uh, the heat balance sheet. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, let me just explain you one more thing which is called the brake specific fuel consumption. So brake specific fuel consumption is basically fuel consumption per output of the engine. Right? So if you measure the fuel consumption which we had already done by using the Birin method and we have already measured this brake power using the dynamometer then what we will get is the brake specific fuel consumption. What is this? This is just a reciprocal of, in a way it is a reciprocal of uh, or it is an indication of efficiency of uh, You just understand this, that how much is the fuel which is being consumed by the engine for the output, for given output. Right? So if you find that the BSFC value is low, then you so we can in, uh, indirectly say that the efficiency value is low. Right? Because you are, you are, the engine is consuming less fuel for the consumption. So if the brake power is expressed in kilowatts, what would be the unit of brake specific fuel consumption? It would be kg per kilowatt hour. Or kg per hour per kilowatt. The same thing. Uh, how do you calculate the brake specific fuel consumption of this setup? For that, you need to measure the brake power using the diameter and you need to measure the fuel consumption using the billet method time for 10 ml. Time for 10 ml. Just these two readings, the diameter reading and the fuel consumption reading will help you calculate the brake specific fuel consumption. You will not require any other reading for arriving at the brake specific fuel consumption. I hope this is clear to you. Thank you. Bye for now.